Hi, welcome to the video. I've recently finished installing an electric power steering conversion on my 996 Carrera 4. This conversion would also work on a Carrera 2 Turbo or GT3. It's basically the same sort of setup that they use on the cup cars. In terms of what it does, it basically removes these parts from the car. So the, the pump is normally driven from the engine. Um, which then has these lines on here and then there are a pair of long lines which go over the top of the engine which are these down near passed over the transmission and then the two lines which go to the front of the car which are these these lines were put on just before i bought the car so they're in very good condition but it's quite common to see these corrode on the ends here so these quite often need replacing they're only available from porsche and the lines themselves are very expensive. I think they're something like 300 pounds each. So if we look at how the, the pump normally fits on the engine, so it usually fits on here. Once this pump is removed, obviously we need to do something about the belt. It is possible to get an idler to go on there. Some people sell an idler, but instead of doing that, I just fitted a, a different belt. So basically it just runs from there straight across to there, it is shorter, it's 50 millimeters shorter. Um, this is the belt that I used. It's a Continental one. You can see the part number on the screen there. Removing the pipes themselves was actually quite a, a difficult job. I had the engine out at the time. You could just leave them in, I guess, if you wanted to, but I wanted to remove them for completeness. Everything else is then done at the front end of the car. So I've, I have cut done a cut out in the cover here. If you're using this as a, just as a regular track car or whatever, you might just not bother with, with the cover at all. Then underneath here, we have the main pump itself. So this is a TRW pump, same manufacturer as who make the, the pumps for the cup cars. This one is actually off of Vauxhall Astra or Zafira, 1998 to 2004. It's mounted on three anti-vibration mounts. It will need a bracket. I made this bracket up myself, just bending some aluminium. There is a bracket available that's used on the, on the Astra and the Zephyr, which you might be able to modify. In terms of the, the plumbing to it, there is a, a high pressure line. So these are all done in, in dash six. So there's a high pressure line, which goes out to the, to the rack and then a low pressure return which is this one. I shall list all of the parts that I used for this at the end of the video. So the routing is from here out through the side. I used bulkhead fittings on there, which does, does add somewhat to the cost because you end up having to obviously buy an extra four connectors for these plus the two bulkhead fittings. But it does a, a neat job. And then that then comes out under here, I'll put a, a photo up just here to show you this because you can't really see under the car. And then it goes through to two fittings on the rack, the fittings on there. I'll see if I can put some photos of those up as well. The parts I used were all from Earl's. As I say, I'll put the part numbers up at the end. Then for the wiring, the, the wiring is very simple for it. There is a ground connection, which is a brown wire, which I've just taken to an earth there. There is also a thick red wire, which is a power feed, which I've taken to a fuse on here. I think it's a 60 amp fuse there. And then that just goes through directly to the battery. So you can see that's the thick red wire on there. There are then two further wires, which have to go through to the um, I've routed them through to the back of the dashboard. There's one wire which connects up to the, um, basically to the alternator warning light. You can see I've, uh, I've still got the cover off my dashboard, so they route through to there. Um, there's one for the alternator warning light and another one for a permanent feed for the ignition. There's a blue and white wire for the alternator warning and a black wire which goes to the ignition 12 volts. The wiring on the instrument cluster, I'll put that up just here. So if it's an early 996, a Mark 1, 
then you need to connect the alternator warning to the white connector, pin 23, which is a blue wire. The ignition permanent feed goes to the black connector, either pin 12 or 25, which will be a black and red, which connects to terminal 15 on the electrics. The wiring changes if it's a Mark 2996. The alternator wire connects to the green connector, pin A12, which is a blue wire, and the ignition 12 volts will connect to the green connector again, pin 3, A3, which is a black and red wire, as on the 996 Mark 1. So there you go, the hardest part of this by far was definitely getting the old pipes out, putting the new ones in is relatively simple. And, uh, and that's everything then. The pump is pretty quiet in operation. In theory, it should operate just the same as the standard pump because the, the running pressure on this is around 100 bar, which is the same as the, the standard engine driven pump. I'll put up the parts list now. And uh, if you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks for watching.